From LA Late News headquarters in Santa Monica, this is the Midday Report on LA Late. It's a big day, a big midday, a big home here on LA with incredible great news about your fourth stimulus check update of 2022. With great news, you're hearing for the first time on this recording live from Santa Monica, California, as your CR for stimulus is getting a push in its own version from House Democrats. Oh my goodness. House Democrats in a series of new statements released a minute ago today say they need to get an economic relief package out right away and it may not be the Build Back Better Act. So they're looking for another economic package to send out money to the American people right away. You're hearing this right now at noontime. I told you it's going to be a major recording. It's breaking news if you're watching live at 11 and if you're watching it at 7 o'clock, it's home stream stimulus. We're going to go over that Build Back Better Act that passed in the House back in the month of November, that it will pass in the Senate. And the incredible checks that Build Back Better Act has a lot of money, at least $15,000 to start. But then when you add additional checks like the MSC on top of that, $60,000 of checks, including third symbols repeating across the board, but I'm gonna show you how to get the third symbols right now. Then we'll be turning to the other sums of money that are all at issue. Student loan debt forgiveness, the latest details on that. Fifth stimulus, which detailed yesterday on this channel, how the president can get this economic relief out to you, the American people, on SSI, SSDI, and Social Security Bureau benefits right today by executive decree. But the big news, I told you we'd have it, and I, I told you I'd have it for you live. You're hearing for the first time is House members, Democrats, say we need an economic relief package done right now before the midterm elections if it's not the build back better act so now they have prepared several options guess what one of them is your cr but they have other options which are just as good i have all those incredible details i told you it was a major recording plus it's home ally and you know what home is about in this recording we go over the deliciousness of chocolate cake yeah, I have chocolate and I have stimulus. Is there anything more better than that? Vanilla. <clears throat> and those details heat up as we go into a big recording. The excitement is here right now, right here, as home streaming stimulus heats up. And excited you're with me. And the excitement is unfolding by the minute, by the hour. As LA goes to the finish line with you, the excitement is upon us. And I'm excited for you across the board. It's a big day, a lot of breaking news, a lot of moolah, and a lot of money at issue. And the excitement starts direct from Santa Monica, California, right here, right now, starting on home. Hey, good midday, everybody. I hope you're having a beautiful day and hope that the weather is good where you are. Well, the incredible great news about that recon is that the House Democrats now signal that they need to get another body of legislation out for economic relief. And that is before those senators add additional checks to that incredible Build Back Better Act. You're hearing breaking news only on LA, and it's all the result of you and CR for stimulus. The programs in that incredible recon, at least $15,000, we're gonna go over each of those checks first before we go over the new twists and turns today. And third stimulus repeating across the board, student loan debt forgiveness, the latest details on that, plus fifth stimulus, what's going on with that? I have all these incredible checks and the breaking news you told, I told you I'd have it for you on air, but first I want you part of this incredible family. Go right in this video right now and subscribe. You're watching LA Late, America's number three most watched financial news channel in America that changed history in 2020 and is trying to do it again today in 2022. Like the video, two, 3,000 likes, and consider becoming a member of Purple Hawk, Purple Power, or Casino VIP. Before we get to the CR for stimulus news today, I want to go over these incredible checks so you understand what's at issue in this recon because now we're going from talking about one body of legislation to two to now we're talking about four in one recording. Yeah, it's a lot of legislation, so I don't want you to get confused. I'm going to slow it down by going over the first. It's the Build Back Better Act that passed in the House in 
October, November, December of last year and is in the Senate that has at least $15,000 of checks with three add-ons and three clusters of checks and the push to add in MFC as well. I want to go over it first, then we go with CR for stimulus, then we're going to go over the other opportunities to get stimulus out the door that the House Democrats are now mulling over in new statements minutes ago. It's huge and it's happening right now on LA. In cluster number one of the Build Back Better Act, there's a lot of checks. Hazard pay extended for one more year for my essential workers. $4,000 of elder care. $4,000 of care for young children. They got $550 checks for Pell Grant recipients. They got in there $12,500 for the purchase of a new electric vehicle. They got in there the $3,600 for the CTC one more year. And then they got in there the home repairs across the board for individuals who want to buy their first home. Wow, that is incredibleness. Now, Maxine Waters, the illustrious legislator from here in Southern California, wanted to get other checks in there, namely money to buy your first home. She wanted to give you money to buy your first home, and she got it in there. And how much is it? She got it in there a little bit less than $25,000, which is what she initially proposed. That first add-on is in there on the House side. Now, let's go to the second cluster of checks home repairs and paid leave these home repairs are to weatherize your home and then the paid leave oh my goodness folks it's a lot of money under the build back better act how much money seventy hundred dollars a week if you make seventy thousand dollars or more per year if you make thirty five thousand dollars or more per year it is eight hundred dollars a week if you make fifteen thousand dollars or more per year it is four hundred dollars a week how many weeks four to six weeks per year now if you don't work but your son or daughter does work they're going to get the check every time they have to take off from work to take you to the doctor's office it's incredible and it's for all of you w2 1099 you all qualify for this incredible sums of money across the board which then tees up us tees us up for the second add-on of checks it comes from bob casey 250 billion dollars of free home health care for seniors and people on disabilities wow now let's turn to the third cluster of checks and there we go seniors and free internet in that third cluster of free internet money for the farmers, money for the independent contractors. They got in there the Pell Grant recipients, $550 checks, and then the money for the seniors, cover benefits with hearing added on the house and lowering and the Medicaid gap fix as well. But the Senators vowing to add three other bodies of checks or provisions, and they are for our seniors, lowering the eligibility age of Medicare dental and also vision checks which is part for the course of what we're talking about with a third add-on that the senators vowed to add in there and you know what it is if you're in the live chat right now write the three letters it's m s c again we're still at the build back better act in this recording which is also called the fourth stimulus recon or fourth stimulus package MSC is a provision that the senators vowed to add in there and have told tens of thousands of viewers of this channel since the month of may it's going in there so let's go over what it is, who gets it, how much, and how you get it. First, what is it? It refers to monthly IRS stimulus checks. The keyword is IRS. The recon, Build Back Better Act, has multiple checks in there, upwards of 60000 But these are ones that come out from IRS. Wow. So who gets it? Legislators have told tens of thousands of viewers of this channel that the eligibility would be the same as a third stimulus check. Single and visual, $75,000 or less, we get it. Married couples, $150,000 or less annual income, we get it as well. Double it. Family of four, we get it as well. Quadruple it. And if you're on benefits, SSI, SSDI, Social Security, or railroad benefits, you would get as well. It's not income. It's not taxable. It's offered nationwide. It is not offered on a state-by-state -state basis. Adult dependents would also get it as well. And it goes off, and off the most recent tax return. So if that tax return did have a direct deposit account on it, that's how you'd receive the funds. Okay, so that is the msc to be added to the build back better act which then tees up what happened on this channel no less than one week ago one week ago on this channel i said to viewers this channel well the additions to provisions to the build back better act in the senate happens the following way first we go to a subcommittee the senate just add provisions in that build back better act it's been passed by the House, but we don't have a Senate bill. We don't have a Senate bill until they start adding provisions in there. They're not going to remove any of those checks that were put in there by fellow Democrats on the House side. They're just going to add stuff in there. And they've all said they have a lot of stuff to add. Again, a Senate subcommittee. Then we go to Senate floor vote. Then we have a two-day voter rhomba. But that event has not occurred yet. 
So over a week ago, I said, why not bring back a very popular program that made history? I created it and it made U.S. history in December 2020 called CR for Stimulus. Well, the breaking news you're going to hear in just a second is now House Democrats are mulling over doing their version of CR for Stimulus. Oh, boy. Do you think they've been listening? I think they have. First, let me go over what CR for Stimulus 2020 looked like. Let's go over what CR for Stimulus 2022 looks like. And then we're going to go over what you're going to hear for the first time in this channel's recordings. The House version of CR for Stimulus revealed just minutes ago. All right. CR for Stimulus was an invention I came up with in December 2020. We had, at that time, looked at the landscape of the American economy. We had first stimulus as soon as the pandemic started. It had run out by spring of 2020. Then we were waiting for a second stimulus package. It's a package because it's thousands of pages. It's 3,000 pages of length. It was not over the finish line in spring of 2020. The negotiators were Nancy Pelosi on behalf of the Democrats, Steve Mnuchin on behalf of the Republicans. He was then Treasury Secretary to Donald Trump. They negotiated in the spring, not done. Summer, not done. Fall, then winter, still not done. And so I sat back one night, one day, and I thought to myself, we got an issue here. We have had now 11 months of negotiations on this package that's enormous. It's 3,000 pages of life. We don't have a deadline. They don't have an inherent deadline imposed upon themselves. So what do we do with this? And I thought to myself the following idea in December 2020. Why not find a body of legislation separate from this proposed second stimulus package? That's huge. It's 3,000 pages. Something else that's smaller, that has a deadline, that we can get a check in, that you would get fast. And I looked and I found it. It's called a social spending bill or the budget bill or the continuing resolution. It has a lot of different names. What is it? Every few months, the federal government must pass a continuing resolution, which is to fund the federal government. It's money to run the government, run the national parks, run the federal buildings. They do it about every six months. And it goes by bipartisan support. But more importantly, it has an inherent deadline. They may roll it over a day or a week, but they don't roll it over three months because if they do, the federal government shuts down and no one wants that. That's why it goes by bipartisan support. So I came up with the idea to put a stimulus check in the CR and call it CR for stimulus and advocate for its inclusion at a time in which everyone was looking at second stimulus as the finishing line. I said, this could be our finishing line instead. So I prepared the advocacy. I prepared the reaction to naysayers, and then I made the very first recording. And on that first recording, I said, hey, Purple Power, the viewership of the channel, I have an idea. Why not put a stimulus check in the continuing resolution that has a deadline then of December 2020, and if it gets in there, then it becomes law because they're not going to roll this over. It has an inherent deadline, and the money will go out and in your hands by December or January the following year. Do you like it? And viewers loved it, the idea. So we rolled it out. And immediately the naysayers were ready with exactly what I thought they were going to say. And I had my reaction ready as well. Their reaction, it doesn't belong in there, Allied. And they were right. That's what I said to them is my reaction. You're right. It doesn't belong in there. A continuing resolution is not to give money to the American people. It's to give money to the federal government to run its operations. But here's my reaction. Since the beginning of time, Congress has had legislation where they put money in there that doesn't belong. So they could certainly do this with us, our money. And guess what? They've been doing this during the pandemic. During the pandemic, they had a COVID relief bill where they sent out money to foreign military governments. They had another COVID relief bill where they proposed to give money to build a new FBI building. And they had another COVID relief bill to propose funding for the Department of Copyrights, not for COVID either. So I said, you could put that money in there. And we pushed. And initially, they came back and said, I like the idea of doing stimulus in the continuing resolution when they heard our push. We said, good. And we looked, and then they said it would be unemployment stimulus. We said, no, that's not what we're talking about. <laughs> we're talking about a stimulus check. And we pushed, and finally, we got it. I made history. You made history. This channel created the idea, ran with the idea, and made U.S. history. Because guess what? The $600 stimulus check that was sent out to the American people in December 2020, or the few weeks thereafter, was only in the continuing resolution. The second stimulus package never became law. There never was a second stimulus package check ever. This idea of putting a check in the CR came from me, and it went over the finish line. 
So over one Saturday ago, I came back on her. I said, you want to do it again? 2022, you want to do another CR for stimulus right now? And viewers said, yes. It lines up perfectly. It's been 11 months of negotiation once again and no finish line. Again, it's a massive bill with thousands of pages. Again, it's two people negotiating. And again, we have an opportunity in front of us. The social spending or the budget bill, the continuing resolution, that deadline is February 2022. In less than 30 days from now, the federal government must pass this CR again. So I said, go on social media and push for its advocacy. And guess what? It appears to have worked initially because the first major step has unfolded in the last few minutes. I'm going to give you a preview of it right now, and then after the commercial break, we're going to go over more in a second. The preview of it right now is that in the last few hours, House Democrats, not Senate Democrats, but House Democrats have said, you know what? The Build Back Better Act may pass, but we as Democratic House members cannot go in the midterm election with no economic plan passed since third stimulus. So we must pass another economic plan. <sighs> Incredible. And so what are they looking at? They are looking at either doing a brand new additional economic plan or inserting economic relief into other bodies of legislation that are in the works right now. Here we go. They are looking at the potential Ukraine-Russia sanctions bill that is going to potentially be done by the end of this week. They are looking at the funding deadline bill, which is the CR for stimulus. And they're also looking at a brand new economic relief bill. As Representative of California, Representative Pete Aguilar says, who's vice chairman of the Democratic caucus, we now have our eye on economic re recovery. They're absolutely will be pieces of legislation that will continue to alleviate the supply chain issue and tr and tamp down on inflationary pressures, and we must get them done. Finishing the, the what's not part of the quote, we must get them done, he says as well, before the midterm election. Wow. Those incredible details coming up at the commercial break. Plus, we'll be looking at the beauty, as you know what Home and, and Stream Symbols is about, of chocolate cake. What is the correct way to get chocolate cake? And what is the incorrect way to get chocolate cake? With lots of stimulus. <laughs> no, but it's a little bit more delicious than that. Those incredible details coming up after the commercial break. Plus, we'll be looking at the other opportunities of what the President of the United States can do to get money in your hand quicker than later without the Build Back Better Act. Those incredible details coming up after the commercial break. But fear is a little bit about the community page. I'll be back with you in 60 seconds. If you want money right now, not five days from now, and not five weeks from now, then reach out to the community page. The volunteers can help you find that money for rent and utilities. That's at news.la.com forward slash community. The community page features a series of volunteers who are viewers like you. They can help you find rent, utilities, SNAP, food benefits, mortgage assistance, and help you with eviction moratorium questions as well. Their Facebook, Twitter and Instagram individuals reach out to them and indicate the city and state you're from and they'll get back to you shortly. That's a community page. Volunteers working for you, viewers helping one another. Stay with LA for more. Join LA Late Daily for the excitement of the new LA Late Live Daily. The excitement starts on mornings LA Late at 9 a.m. LLA returns at 11 a.m. daily. And then afternoons LLA at 1 p.m. Join us daily as the excitement continues live from Santa Monica on LLA. And the excitement continues right now in the big second half as that recon will pass in the House of Representatives in the Senate. The Build Back Better Act that has lots of checks in there and the Senate checks on top of that, like MSC. 
plus third stimulus, stimulus repeated across, across the board, board in four stimulus. stimulus. Wow, that's, that's a lot of money, up to 60000 But what we're going to look at as we continue in the second half, we are going to look at what House Democrats are mulling over right now. And then potentially by the end of the week, by doing the ancillary bodies of economic relief that could have money for you out the door. The audio will clear up in just a second, but maybe we should play some music. There we go. Uh, it didn't help, but we try our best. <laughs> With that, I want you to pause the Credible Family. Go right on this video right now and subscribe. I want you to pause the Credible Family. Hit that subscribe button right now. Like the video, 2,000 likes. And consider becoming a member of Purple Hawk, Purple Power, or Calcino VIP. There is so much across the board. In the meantime, stay with me later today because the videos continue throughout the day. With a brand new afternoon's LA at 3 o'clock and a brand new evening's LA at 5 o'clock as well. So, so many details, details so, so much excitement, excitement. I'm excited to hear here. But let's, let's go right, right back into where we left off with Pete Aguilar, Aguilar here out of California. And the audio will, will clear up just shortly. Pete, Pete Aguilar is basically saying, hey, we cannot go into the midterm elections without an economic relief really package passed. So the Democrats are now mulling over, especially in the House, the opportunity to do an ancillary piece of economic relief. And that ancillary piece of economic relief could have lots of stimulus in there. We have our line on economic recovery, and there absolutely must be pieces of legislation. Notice he says it's legislation, plural, that we discuss as an alleviate supply chain issues and deal with inflationary pressures. And this is as we are looking at now that House Democrats may put a U.S. manufacturing bill to the floor of the House by the end of the week. Um, because uh, the recon on, on the Senate side, side has not passed. Not passed. This, this bill, bill, according to a new report out minutes ago, so says may go to the House floor by a, for a vote by the end of this week and may have a unanimous Democratic caucus a, 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 a vote uh, in favor of it um, because it's needed across the board. What's an issue here? What's an issue here is that the Democrats are really looking at the same thing that you and I are looking at. Recon... Build Back Better Act, all good, but the issue at hand is that can we get another economic bo relief bill out sooner rather than later, as the audio is cleared up, and get that economic bill out really quickly, and we can. So, the House is not waiting. Here are now, let's see how many we got. One, two, three, I believe we have, have three different bodies of legislation that could potentially have your economic assistance in each of them or one of them in literally the next two weeks. I, I told you it's moving very, very quickly. It's all because of CR for stimulus. First, there is now talk of getting additional items added to the continuing resolution, which is our CR for stimulus, number one. Number two, there is now, as you saw in, in this quote from Pete Aguilar, who's the California representative, a push to get this economic bill, I don't even know how to refer to it, but an economic policy bill that deals with manufacturing, the economy, supply chain, competitiveness with China, and also inflation, get that passed in the House by the end of this week. We're moving real quickly here, folks. Number three, on the Senate side, I've been covering since the last 24 hours, that we have bipartisan support to do a bill that would sanction Russia. That does not preclude also sending out money to the American people in that as well. That's actually a bipartisan bill. So that's really quite interesting. And this is as the recon is still on plate, still in the works, but this is a way to get the money out faster across the board. Really, really exciting. So how should your advocacy look like with so many different ways to get money out the door now? What should your advocacy be like? Your advocacy can really broaden if you wish. I'm going to be featuring this more a little bit tonight on Afternoons LA and Evenings LA. But your advocacy can broaden because guess what? Democrats are now going on the record saying the economy, the economy, the economy. We must address the economy. We will not win if we don't address the economy. Guess what? That works both ways. So the Democrats have to do it and also the Republicans. Seats for stimulus, it's not there, yes. But it's basically saying... Whoever addresses the economy the best is going to win the midterm elections. So the Democrats have to do it. The Republicans have to do it. And if one doesn't do it, the other side's going to win. 
wow. And for the first time ever, we have the Democrats saying, we got to do the economy. We haven't done enough of the economy yet, just yet. All right, that's the first issue. Second, does the president have other opportunities to send out more money to you across the board? He does. I'll be featuring this more on Afternoon's LA later today. And it's in the face of brand new statements about what's going on with Cinema, Mansion, and Bernie. Uh, that's also brand new. I have a lot of brand, news to, brand new news today. But let me tell you what the president could do. There is really at least two options, and I'm going to go over them right now. First, the president can do parts of this stimulus right today to give you more money if you're a person on SSI, SSDI, Social Security, veterans, seniors, or related beneficiaries. Here's the issue. Your current benchmark is COLA, and that COLA benchmark has been where it has been for many, many years. COLA doesn't work because as your as the cost of living goes up, COLA has remained flat for many years. It came in at 5.9% for next year because inflation is out of control. So what can the president do under the Constitution? The president of the Constitution has every right and every authority to pick up the phone and speak to an agency saying, you know what, Mr. Agency, you have the right to determine how to do this, but I want to give you encouragement to maybe do it this way. There are many federal agencies like the Social Security Administration that sends out your benefit check that determines the guidelines that has to do how they do things. If they have the charter agreement authority to determine how they do things. COLA is the current benchmark. He can pick up the phone and say, you know what? Replace it with inflation. And I want you to replace it with inflation immediately, effective March 1st, 2022. Guess what would happen? If it was done today, your benefits checks would go up about 3% overnight. Yeah, it's literally that quick. 5.9% is the COLA benchmark right now. The inflationary numbers released from the Department of Labor last month was exactly what I had predicted, the only person in the United States predicting it. When the Federal Reserve was at 1% to 2% transitory, Wall Street is at 2 to 3%, I was at 8%, it came in at 7.5%. It was astronomically higher, but just a little bit less than I had predicted it. 7.5%, your benefits would go up 7.5% in the month of March, not 5.9%, a lot more money. That's the first thing the president could do. The second thing the president could do, and I want to thank a particular viewer, and I want to reach out to other viewers in just a second about this as well, is the president can repurpose existing money and send it out to you. Before I get to the second one, let me give you an example of the last one. Can the president pick up the phone and tell an agency to change their guidelines? Yes. Joe Biden has done it before. He did it in October of last year when he picked up the phone and contacted the Department of Agriculture for SNAP and said, I want you to pay more money. And they've been paying more money a lifetime since October, 25%. So now let's go to that second item. Which one is this? Repurposing existing money. The way the president does this is he can look to an existing agency that's not the Department of Treasury, that has extra money sitting around from a program that's expired and tell them repurpose the money for this purpose and send it out. Donald Trump did this once, had two opportunities, and Joe Biden can do it as well. The very simple concept is what happened with Trump and FEMA. FEMA was given a lot of money at the start of the pandemic. Its programs ran out. The programs were over at FEMA, but the money was still there. So Trump understood that Americans needed more FPUC, that enhancement boost of unemployment, but FPUC required an act of Congress. So Trump picked up the phone and contacted FEMA and says, FEMA, you got some extra money there. Your programs are run out. I want you to use this for unemployment assistance. <laughs> Sounds strange. It did sound strange. FEMA Federal emergency relief, sending out money for unemployment? It just doesn't sound the same. But the president could do it. And that became LWA. Donald Trump had a second opportunity. Had he done the second opportunity, he would have won the midterm elections. He had $550 billion of extra money. And folks, that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. It's at least two stimulus checks. $550 billion sitting at SBA, Small Business Administration, left over from the first and second stimulus packages for corporations. The programs are over, but the money was there. He could have picked up the phone and contacted SBA's head, Javier Carranza, and sent out this money as a stimulus check. He didn't. And I think it was a brutal mistake at the time. So Joe Biden can do this as well. Now, this is where I'm going to reach out to the viewership of this channel. I said Joe Biden can do this, but does the money exist? I want to thank one nice viewer who sent me a private message on Instagram yesterday, which detailed some of the money that that viewer found. If you can find other money, send me a private message on social media, Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram of any 
hundreds of billions of dollars you find of existing programs that have now ended and the money is left over, you would likely see in a news report or a statement from that agency. And I'll go on air and say, hey, Joe Biden repurposed the money. And that's how we rock and roll. And how we also rock and roll is home LA and home street and stimulus LA. And boy, in today's recording, we go over the deliciousness of the food we all love. And that deliciousness, you can hear the sounds, is a chocolate cake. I saw Bob Bacon and Andrew in the commercial break saying, ah, chocolate cake, we got this one. <laughs> we got this one. In today's recording, we're going to go over chocolate cake. But more importantly, we're going to go over how to choose the right chocolate cake at the, star, at the market and how to not choose the wrong chocolate cake. Uh, and that is the deliciousness that unfolds us right today. All right, so when buying a chocolate cake, you obviously want to go with the most obvious choice, which is what your vision shows you. You're looking at the chocolate cake, and you're in the market, and it doesn't even look brown. <laughs> now, that's not this one. This one looks about as brown as it can be. But it looks sort of beige. And you're like, is that chocolate cake or bran muffins? Is that chocolate cake, or is that just like, you know, wheats and oats? Well, here, here is the nuance of how to visualize a good chocolate cake. There are different ways to make a chocolate cake. One way is with cake flour that has a cocoa in it. So the cake flour will be brown and the cake will be looking like it's moist. And that will be where the chocolate derives from. So you see how I'm doing this in this video. Sort of like how we're talking about where to put similar checks into, into different buys and bills. Now I'm going to how to dif differentiate the different types of chocolate cakes on the market and how to choose the right one. So the first one is to look at the body of the cake and say, is the body of the cake dark brown or is it beige? If it's beige, move on. What have they done? They've taken your generic cake flour yellow cake flour, white cake flour, um, even just white dough flour, and they've started that as the basis of the chocolate cake. You ain't going to taste any chocolate in it, folks. That is not even cake flour, let alone chocolate cake flour. So the, the, the base of the cake is wrong to begin with. Move on. So the one I'm holding up right now is a base in which the flour was cake flour, and chocolate cake flour. Let's just look at the ingredients. By the way. I didn't think of even doing this. So the opening ingredient is wheat flour, in which they have now added in there um, uh, uh, ingredients to bring it to that darker look. So it has sort of a weedy flavor. This is very interesting. So while, while you may think it's a chocolate cake flour, it's actually a wheat flour, which is not a bad thing which is not a bad thing, but in its inherent look, it looks like a moist chocolate cake. Okay, so far we're good. Is there other ways to spot it before moving on? Yes. You want to look from top to bottom on the cake. So do not be deceived by glazing. Glazing is where they take a very non-chocolate cake. They take a little bit of glazing, which is very, very cheap, and they put it along the top, and they call it chocolate cake. Mm, no, no. You've taken a very basic, bland cake and put the glaze on the top. You know what it's going to taste like? You're going to slice it, and you're only going to taste chocolate on the top. It's not going to have much flavor. So while this is a full chocolate cake that doesn't even have glazing on it, you take a slice of this, the whole cake will taste like chocolate. doesn't matter what part of this cake I'm holding up that you bite into. You're going to taste chocolate anywhere you taste it. You buy a cake that has the glaze on the top, it, you only, and it, that's the only place where the chocolate is appearing. You ain't going to have any other flavor. All right, the next one. Right next to this cake, before I bought this one, there was, cake, there was a cake that had chocolate chips in the cake. Oh, that is an exit sign to run for the door. <laughs> You're going to run from, away from that cake as quickly as you can. Never buy a cake that has chocolate chips in it if that's all it's bringing to the, to the game. Because your essence of chocolate will be little chips sporadically put through a non-chocolate cake. Again, not working. It won't work. It'll have even less flavor than the glaze on top of the chip. 
the cake. Then now we're just putting little chips in the cake. Uh uh. Uh uh. We did cover this a lot in home streams, uh, holiday streams, so almost back in November, December. We were talking about panettones, and we we're talking about panettones where they had just pieces of chips in there and pieces of chips on the top. Ink and cotton, no flavor. It's, it's going to waste your money. Don't buy it. Now, so far, we've talked about only one that works, where the whole cake embodies chocolate dough or cake dough, or at least they started, in this case, with a wheat flour dough, and then brought it into the ch chocolate moist dome uh, effectively. What is even better than this? Better than this is mousse. Mousse, or some type of chocolate cream that you can spot. Now, in Southern California, there are a lot of major department stores where you go into the cake department and you look at the cake section. Now, I'm talking about the refrigerated section. I'm not talking about the dry section. This is clearly dry, so this can be on the floor of the, of the market. I'm talking about the refrigerated section where you're going in there and they have the section where it's a birthday cake. Look in there and you will see things that go by names like mousse cake, truffle cake. Um, uh, they also call it tuxedo cake. You go on Amazon, they offer you the word tuxedo cake. I don't know if it's, if it's proprietary. I don't think it is. I don't think anyone owns the rights to that word. What's going on there? There what they have is they have now sliced into the cake, sliced, not sliced into the cake, built up the cake, and in there they put in the chocolate mousse during the, during the preparation process. Okay, of all of them, that is the best. That is the best because you're not getting flour for your chocolate. You're not getting glaze. You're not getting chips. You're getting a massive hunk of chocolate mousse. And trust me, in the baking process, that's why that's cost more money. It will bring the price point of the cake somewhere from $4 suddenly to $15 because there is that much more chocolate. And trust me, you take a slice of it, you are going to be so overwhelmingly happy compared to that chocolate chip thing, which is going to taste like a pretzel compared to this. All right, so how do you spot that one? To spot that one, again, you need to really pick it up in your eye. You need to pick it up out of the case. Do not be afraid. There was a lot of rules passed in the 1970s that says you have a right to inspect your product before you buy it. So pick it up, look at it, turn it around and say, how much mousse is in there? Here is what they often do. Some stores will make the mousse flatten out on the face but then when you turn it you realize it's this thin so they'll make it look thicker by taking their their spatula and spreading it but then when you turn it it's really quite thin don't get tricked by that look for that thickness in there as well next do not be surprised if you go for looking for the same cake and you pick it up and suddenly it's cream not even chocolate yeah they'll play that game as well they'll put a little bit of chocolate and a massive amount of cream and sometimes the cream is a price point that is so much cheaper in the baking process that they're making a bigger profit margin at your expense because you did not want a cream cake. You wanted a chocolate cake across the board. That is how you really get the essence of the cake. Finally, if I didn't make clear, when getting that cake, turn it around on all different corners. Take it out of the case, turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it. Because trust me, I've seen nine out of 10 times that during the cake preparation, they play games with the packaging. So it looks good on the front end, but on the back end, you realize, oh, there's not as much chocolate in there as I thought there was. Let me jump in the live chat right now and see if you have any chocolate tricks when buying your chocolate cake across the board. Uh, there we go. I pick it up and it lands in my cart, says Bob. He just, I just grab it and I just start eating <laughs> <laughs> Bob Bacon. Most of the cakes I buy are gone before I can assess them. <laughs> I love that. Bob's like, I don't have time to assess the cake. I just eat it. It's just gone. It's just, it tastes good in my body. I just, I just move on. <laughs> and uh, do we have authority to open the cake and bite into it before we buy it? We do not. Now, here's uh, actually, Anne has a good question. Is there another way to, to size up the cake? Other than looking at, it. yeah, one of the ways is literally um, to get a little bit of the light to reflect into the cake. So here I'm doing it with this production light. 
this is to, this is supposed to be a moist cake that I'm holding. This is not a, a, moose, a, a moose cake, but a moist uh, a, a flour cake. So if it if you see a lot of light reflecting in there, you see the moisture. You see the moisture in the cake. That means it's really quite fresh. Now, if you want to be really aggressive, they'll probably throw you out of the market. But you can literally shake the cake a little bit to see how much does it wiggle. If it looks like it's stuck in there like a rock, it may not be that fresh. So, yeah, there we go. Dragon. Good tuxedo cake is made from thick white ganache filling and dark chocolate fudge frosting. Uh... Yeah, so th what Dragon says is fascinating. There's a lot in Dragon's comment. Uh, there's like a lot of Dragon sentence. Let me read Dragon's sentence again. Good tuxedo cake is made from thick white ganache filling and a dark chocolate fudge frosting. Okay, so first the issue is the name of tuxedo cake. The name tuxedo cake takes on a lot of different meanings at different vendors. So sort of be careful about that because people say tuxedo cake and I've seen two tuxedo cakes from the same market, and they're totally different. Uh, number two, the way you make the tuxedo cake, there's supposed to be a white and a brown, but the white and the brown is not necessarily defaulting to what Dragon says. So um, there's a lot of leeway. It's sort of like you know some beverages, some beverages at a bar. Um, the bartenders have big leeway about what they can put in there. So while ganache filling and dark chocolate fr fr fudge frosting um, might be the way tuxedo cake was envisioned in some places, most of the times when I've seen it, the tuxedo cake is not a frosting, but actually a mousse. So, and this is where we get sort of fascinating in the discussion. This is why this is a really good chocolate video. Frosting versus a mousse is a very different experience for the chocolate lover. If you know what a frosting is versus a mousse, you're going to really say, I, I want the mousse. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, there is um, yay for wiggly chocolate cake. <laughs> and so, Anne's going to be walking into markets all this week long shaking the chocolate cake. <laughs> Joanne, can I just have a sample? <laughs> Uh, this, um, Sugar Coma, Crayola Sushi King, uh, by the end of this video, is going to be changing his name to Crayola Chocolate King. <laughs> Chocolate for stimulus. <laughs> Chocolate. Chocolate sushi for stimulus. Uh, there we go. Um, let's go over some incredible <laughs> other comments. Um, uh, that's just cheating, says Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to buy, there's nothing worse than buying a chocolate cake and bringing it home. And there's just like no chocolate in it. It's like, what did I buy? It's just like, you know, uh, it's like being set up on a bad blind date. <laughs> it's just one of those things just don't want. Uh, see our cake before buying it. See our, see our, see our cake before, <laughs> there we go. Uh, cinnamon roll for stimulus. See our for stimulus. Cinnamon roll for stimulus. Uh, Ella, you need diabetes uh, uh, chocolate options. Oh, Sandy. Okay, I can do that, Sandy. I actually make um, for Sandy. She says, "Can you give me? Can you give me an option for chocolate?" I'm going to do it really briefly right now, but it could almost be an entire video. I make a delicious sugar-free chocolate cake that is amazing. And when I mean sugar-free, it is sugar-free. What is the key ingredient? The key ingredient is. If you go to Walmart, they have Hershey's uh, chocolate powder, which is 100% pure. So it is a 100%, excuse me, cocoa powder. It's 100% pure cocoa powder. If you start with that as your normal uh, 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 flour, and then I'll show you tricks. If you want that video, send me private messages. I'll make that video. That chocolate cake is a thousand percent more decadent than a tuxedo cake. You'll be shocked how decadent the cake is. It is very simple to make. And the reason why it's so decadent is it's all cocoa. You're just eating a massive amount of pure cocoa. Um, and and I actually can uh, I absolutely love making it. So it is a great option for diabetics who should not be having any artificial sugar, should not be having any type of sugar. And in that, in that case, we're not using any sugar. We're using pure cocoa. Um, there's Sandy. Now I want chocolate cake. 
<laughs> so there you go. And at 44 minutes, wow, what a big day it has been. Uh, if you To recap, if you just join me late in this video, let me tell you what we're covering today on Afternoons LA at 3 o'clock. On Afternoons LA at 3 o'clock, we're going to go over the breaking news, which is the House Democrats are now saying that we have to go into the midterm elections as Democrats with an economic new plan passed. So whether or not the Build Back Better Act passes or doesn't pass, the, the House Democrats saying, you know what, we need another economic policy bill to pass. They are thinking the same way you and I are thinking with CR for stimulus. They're looking at a lot of options. Among the options are, by the end of this week passing, a potential economic relief bill. I want to call it economic relief bill because there's so much going on in the proposal. It, I can't call it one thing. They're talking about U.S. manufacturing, competitors with China, supply chain, inflation, a lot of items across the board. They're also talking about the government funding deadline, which is February. We're also talking about the Russia-Ukraine sanctions legislation that's coming out of the Senate. Then I'll also have new comments about what's going on with Bernie Sanders, who's really going in harder and deeper by the hour. I mean, you saw yesterday's recordings where I said Bernie is just, you know, and Jalapa are just ramping up. He's ramped up even more in 24 hours since yesterday's recordings. Uh, and now other Democrats are saying, you know what, um, I, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Those details are more coming up on Afternoon's Ally. It'll be a brand new video across the board. Also, Evening's Ally, brand new as well. But this video will take you into the 1 o'clock Afternoon's Ally coming up in just about 40 minutes from now. Just enough time for you to go to the market and shake some chocolate cake to see if it's fresh. <laughs> Those details are more coming up. And if you're watching this show at 7 o'clock, next up is Evening's Ally. Uh, the continuation with uh, Evenings Extra at 8 o'clock. Evenings Allied all every night has Evenings Allied at 5. Uh, then at 6, Evenings Countdown, Home Stream Stimulus, you may be watching right now. And then Evenings Extra at 8 o'clock. Stay informed, stay focused, have a beautiful day. Subscribe, tell your friends and fam family come over. And we'll have new breaking news coming up on the next video on LLA.